During the space race, NASA spent millions of dollars developing a pen that works in space, only for the Russians to bring a pencil. Except, that's not true at all. It's a bit of a myth, but what did happen? Well, stay tuned. <laughs> So NASA did actually use a pen designed to work in zero gravity, hence the title of this video, but that does beg the question, why not use a pencil? I mean, they're simple and they're significantly cheaper. Well, turns out in space, or specifically in satellites and craft, they're dangerous and potentially deadly too. Pencils rely on breaking small bits of graphite off as you rub them along a piece of paper or whatever other surface you want. But those bits of graphite in a zero gravity environment can't just be sweeped off your page. They start to float everywhere and graphite is not only conductive, so terrible if it gets into electrical equipment, which in a spacecraft there is a lot of it around, but graphite's also flammable. So yeah, you don't want that getting into your electricals in an environment where a fire can spell disaster. Oh, and that's also not to mention what would happen when you sharpen them because those little bits go everywhere because, well, when you're in zero gravity, there's nothing to pull them down. Oh, incidentally, this is also why you're not allowed to have bread in space. I know, learning lots of things today. So that also begs the question too, well, why not just use a regular pen? That one's actually fairly simple. Ballpoint pens, for example, well, most pens rely on gravity to pull the ink towards the ballpoint. If you tried using that in a satellite, well, you're not gonna get through many words before no ink comes out because there's nothing to push that down. And if they leak, you're gonna have lots of nice little droplets of ink floating around. NASA's first attempt to solve this problem was to purchase 34 mechanical pencils from Taycan Engineering Manufacturing Inc. for a total of $4,400. Yes, that's nearly $130 per pencil in the 1960s. Understandably, many people thought this was frivolous and useless spending from NASA's part, and this is where I suspect the actual myth of NASA spending millions of dollars to develop a pen that works in space actually comes from, because there was public criticism of this at the time. Oh, and this is also not to mention that it didn't solve the graphite problem as the tips in particular were prone to breaking off. So NASA needed something else. Completely separate to all this, enter Paul C. Fisher. Fisher had worked for a ball bearing plant in World War II and then later a pen manufacturer, and he was sick of unreliable and leaky pens, and he set out to develop a non-leak pen. He started his own company, and after investing a million of his own dollars, he developed the first anti-gravity pen, the AG-7. The AG-7 is what has become known as the space pen. Unlike a regular pen, which relies on a cartridge full of ink topped with grease, the space pen cartridge is completely sealed and contains ink separated from a pocket of compressed nitrogen by a ball bearing. The pressure exerted by the nitrogen is what pushes the ink towards the tip, no gravity needed. However, this is where another very clever trick needed to be employed. You see, regular ink under these circumstances would just spray out the tip of the pen and that's not particularly useful for a writing implement. So Fisher developed what he calls Thixotropic Special Ink. Basically, they took regular pen ink and mixed it with a resin, which turned it into what is known as a non-Newtonian fluid. This is a substance that flows differently depending on the forces you apply to it. If it's just sitting there without any forces applied to it, it acts more like a solid, which is why it doesn't actually spray out the tip of the pen. Importantly too is that if I apply agitation or friction, say the force of writing at the ballpoint of the pen, then the ink behaves more like a liquid and it flows easily out the tip and the nitrogen pressure does the rest. Fisher ended up selling his pens to NASA for only $6 a piece. 
Even the Soviet Union ended up buying a few to use as well. At the 1968 conference on Out of Space, cosmonaut Leonov, who was the first man to walk in space and a famous artist, because you know, apparently one of those isn't enough, he drew and signed this peace dove with the space pen, just to show the Russians weren't just bringing pencils. The Fisher Pen Co. largely used the space moniker and the publicity that came with their use by the Russian and US space agencies as advertising, since Fisher never made any significant revenue by the pen's use in the space race. Today, you can still buy various versions of the space pen, and on top of that, like I've been using for years, you can also buy replacement cartridges that are designed to fit most pens. The Fisher Pen Co. claims that they work between minus 35 and 120 degrees Celsius, they don't leak, you can write upside down or underwater, and also of course work in zero gravity, as well as having a shelf life of a hundred years. Whilst I can't verify most of those, I've never had one leak on me, so I guess Paul C. Fisher achieved the mission he originally set out on. Remember, I'm almost a doctor, and until next time, be like a proton. Stay positive. During the space race, right? Oh, the, 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 the. A very clever tip. Space cosmonaut Leonov. Leonov. You can still buy the. Uh, <laughs>